So hello everyone. So today we are going to use English to do the uh, roundtable discussion. So first, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Anne from Answer, which is also an open source program from uh, Segment Vault. And so we know that open source has had a profound impact over the past um, decades, and it has reshaped the landscape of the technology industry today. And while we have to admit that we're still facing challenges from the supply chain, security, sustainability, and also the community development. That's why we are here today to try to find a solution through our discussion. And without further ado, uh, please allow me to introduce today, uh, today's guest. And uh, we are joining by Craig Russell, the director of the Apache Software Foundation. Please give him applause. And also Justin McLean, uh, the director of the Apache Software Foundation as well. And also our lovely Rich Bowen, director of the Apache Software Foundation and open source strategist at AWS. Last but not least, we have William, J William Jiang, director of the Apache Software Foundation and now as the chief evangelist of ByteDance open source office. And thank you for coming. And I hope you have already forgot about the jet lag and have a nice sleep last night. So um, I believe everyone's experience and your unique insights can help us to seek better solutions. So our discussion today will be the future of open source challenges and opportunities. Let's kick start with the challenges since it's the first part of this topic. I would love to have Craig and William for the first question. So we know after the Lock4j shell incident, both uh, governments and enterprises attach great importance to open source supply chain security. So what measures from uh, the Apache Software Foundation have been taken to ensure the security of open source software? It turns out that um, a lot of what the governments are looking for has been what uh, the Software Foundation has been doing for years. And um, the, in particular, the response to vulnerabilities is very well organized and is very much in line with what governments are looking for. So we are almost there in terms of response to vulnerabilities. If you look at the log for shell response, it took a week for us to figure out what was wrong and another week to fix it and release a patch. So the, uh, the, the real problem is following on how do, you, how do you make sure that the downstream users apply those patches in a timely way to avoid difficulties. Uh, okay. Uh I like to speak uh, in English, but uh, to uh, for the great audience, I, I just switch back to Chinese. Uh,老佛姐的事情出现之后,其实大家都应该都有感受,像就是很多线上的同学可能都是忙着要去打补丁,但是我觉得就是开源这个事情实际上是生产者和消费者之间,其实是要做一个比较好的一个沟通。刚
要一起来去啊、呃、了解到这个开源软件的这个开发的特点，然后实时的去获得到上游的这种支持。包括今天其实那个呃，威 s 其实也提到了，就是我们其实拥抱上游，更更好的跟上游一起去合作，其实这样能更更。更快的、更有效的帮助我们来解决这方面的这个问题。Okay, so thank you, and let's move on. And we also know that the open source softwares have become a part of essential uh, infrastructure. So here it comes to uh, Rich and Justin. Uh, so AWS cloud computing also extensively adopts open source softwares. And for enterprises, what questions might occur when using open source software? And what are their perspectives on these challenges or any effective solutions that have already been taken? So the, the most obvious question that companies have around open source is, if the software is free, how do we make a profit? Um, any company needs to clearly understand for itself what its mission is, what it is, what it is uniquely good at. Uh, because if the software is free, then you have to be able to add value to it in order to, to make a profit. So for example, my company, AWS, is good at hosting services. And the value that we bring is the, the scale of hosting services, much like Alibaba does in the same way. Their, their value is in their cloud and their infrastructure. And uh, so it's important that a company define for themselves what their unique value proposition is, what they're uniquely good at. Um, the, the other thing that uh, businesses find very challenging with open source is waiting. Um, when you work for a, with open source, you have to wait for other people to make decisions, people that are not, that, that you don't have any influence over, people that are working for other companies. And so companies tend to try to find ways to go faster, to route around. They, they, see, they see waiting as an obstacle to overcome. And uh, what I try to encourage management to understand is that the waiting allows you to arrive at decisions that are accepted by the entire community, but more importantly, that it gives you the perspective that is different from your own. It allows you to, uh, to see things that you could not see for yourself because you're seeing through the eyes of the community. Great answer. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to take a, a step back a little further in time and look at a company that's just adopting open source, starting to use open source. And often the questions they have, the first one will be around licensing. And it's, if I use this thing, am I going to give away some of my IP? And what are the issues around that? And so that, that sort of path becomes, let's look into this and put in some processes and procedures in place so that we can use this software safely without giving away our IP, and also with the minimal legal risk. Okay, thank you. Uh, so actually, uh, today when I enter the venue, you can see the community, this word, word is, is appearing everywhere. But still want to combine it with a little bit of uh, security as well. So uh, how to leverage the power of the community to uh, tackle the challenges of the supply chain of open source software? I'd love to have William and Justin for this question. <laughs> OK. Um, um, just as I had uh, mentioned, mm. <laughs> oh, oh, 其实我嗯，就是我刚才啊啊 ，because I need to speak first. I just want to uh, make sure uh, Justin know about what 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 I'm thinking. So so so, so I switch to. I can read. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, the the translation just uh, treats the language uh, one way. If I speak Chinese, you. It doesn't make sense. So I have to switch back to English to make Maybe sure. Maybe Willem you know. just wants to like seek a challenge to, you oh, know, oh. give him a chance. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, back. What's the question? 
<laughs> Thank you. So I would go and repeat this question again. Uh, so oh, I, actually, I know that. So, so use the community powers to, yes, to tackle the uh, supply, supply chain. chain. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we, we need to uh, have a lot of conversations, and especially, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the early uh, uh, questions, I, I mentioned uh, the downstream need, needs to talk to the upstream, and uh, yeah, we, we need to work together. And uh, um, especially um, in the open source world, uh, it's like um, when we publish the software, we, we barely know who uses it. Uh, and we have the license to help us to protect us uh, with the no warranty, but I, I think a lot of um, users, especially I, I think in China, we, we have a lot of users use open source. They just take it for granted, think it's, it's good enough, and uh, because a lot of people use it, it's safe. Oh, I don't need to care about that. So sometimes uh, we need to educate them and uh, to make sure they know what's the consequence if they just download the, the, the software and, uh, well, it's just, let us know we need to take a rest. But <laughs> oh, uh, back to the question is, uh, uh, we, we need to um, educate and uh, maybe use the power of the community to make sure they know they don't need to take the uh, software um, ungranted and um, just like uh, they, they they take it from the supermarket and they need, don't need to pay for it then uh, someone will <laughs> take care of it so they need to take care of uh, himself so so and the, I think uh, um, the best way is uh, we work together and uh, let the users to talk to the upstream and uh, once the security patch released, they were informed and uh, they can keep update their software in time. So that's my opinion. I, I like your eggs analogy. I, I think you should look at the use by date on your eggs as well. <laughs> so um, if you're using open source software, there's a big difference between a random project on GitHub and software produced by a, a foundation it's more likely that the foundation is going to take security a lot more seriously and they're going to look at all the dependencies that they have in their code and they're going to make sure that they get updated and don't have security vulnerabilities in them. They might even go as far as um, releasing uh, software builds of materials so you can actually have a, you know, a, a, a way of looking at what they do depend on and find out if there's any you know, future issues that's going to occur with that. And I think we're going to see that happening more and more in, in the near future. And I know that, Justin, you were going to deliver a keynote speech tomorrow about the Apache way, building community and longevity. And that really helps me to move on to the next question. It's also about the community, too. Uh, I would love to ask you, as since you're also a community manager, so how can we attract and engage more contributors while ensuring diversity of the open source community? I would love to have you and Craig for this question. The, the first thing I would do is look at your, who you're currently attracting in your contributors. Now, um, I know some projects, for example, either intentionally or unintentionally, may have a high committer bar. And it may be that the people that only end up becoming committers are groups who can work full-time and are employed by a company. And then you're missing out on about half your contributions that could happen. You, you want to maybe look at the process and see what groups you're attracting and not attracting and change things so that, you're, for example, lowering the committer bar so that you do attract people who are only working part-time or have volunteers will have other issues in their lives that means they, they, they can't contribute every single day. Uh, and those contributions, while they may not be as consistent or every single day um, are very less very valuable because they give you a different perception and may come up with some interesting and diverse ideas that actually makes your product a much, much better product. I would only add that um, if community development is part of the thing that makes your, your project work, 
this has to be something that every community member thinks about and actively works on. So, for example, if you have a question on your mailing list that is a really stupid question, um, you could say in writing, this is a really stupid question, why don't you do some research? Or you could say, I'm not sure I understand the question. Can you tell me more about what you're trying to accomplish? So everybody in the community has a part in making even stupid questions from people who don't know what they're doing to take that as an opportunity to say, maybe our documentation needs a little bit of work and encourage a dialogue with the person who didn't understand and maybe it's the person who really doesn't understand what they're doing, or maybe it's the documentation that could help that person understand. So this is something that um, everybody needs to be aware of and pay attention to the questions that come in. And in fact, sometimes it's a, it's a developer who's asking a question, how do I use this API? What is this API really supposed to do and I tried to use it and it didn't work. And maybe they're using it wrong or maybe there's a bug. And until you know whether there's a bug or whether they're using it wrong, you engage them. And when they discover that, oh, it's actually a bug, then that turns into a, can you suggest how to fix it? And that is engaging the community, some, somebody who can actually fix something provide a patch or a pull request, and then you've engaged another member of the community. And the more they engage, the more you say, well, this person is providing value to the community, and we should make them a contributor, recognize them, and then if they contribute more and more over time, you make them a committer. I would just say, summing that up, be welcoming to new users. That's a good way to put I, what I just said. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that just really reminded me of my first day on GitHub. I was like so confusing and reading those docs. I was like, where should I start? Or like, mm. but then I just asked a help from my IT colleague who like do a video tutorial for me. And then in the end, he was trying to make sure that I understand it. So he said, you do this from the top of it and let me check whether you understand it or not. But that really helps though a little bit torturing. <laughs> and also, uh, since we've just emphasized on the diversity, and I believe today's audience, they would also eager to hear some advice on like local community building or engagement. So I will have Justin and William on this question to wrap up. Yeah, I'm, I, I think there's a simple answer to increasing engagement in the local community, and that is hold local events get people involved, meet face to face. Uh, while a lot of open source is done online, um, you can form much more meaningful relationships with people if you do meet them face to face. Oh, hold on. Uh, uh, Rich, I will also have your opinion oh, here. Okay. William just told me that he don't want to like, end up, you know. <laughs> so we were talking a moment ago about the importance of diversity so that you get other different opinions, different perspectives, but we're all also human, and so having a shared perspective is, is very important. And so engaging with a local community group allows you to talk with people that have the same, the same language, the same cultural experience, the same upbringing as you, and help you get through challenges that you're having, understanding, the, the culture of the community. And this is particularly, um, it's particularly useful in open source because open source is part technology and part culture. And when a project is predominantly developed by people in Europe or in the United States, it comes out of a culture that may be less familiar to you. And so having a local group of people with a shared culture to help get through those challenges can just be so important. Um, where I live, the technology community is very small. 
and you know, finding people to engage with locally and have face-to-face -face conversations is very challenging, and that is why I like going to events so much, because it gives an opportunity to actually sit down with people and share a meal. Um, I, I've shared meals over the last few days with, with good friends, and it's just amazing how much sitting down and having a meal with somebody improves the quality of conversation. So I, I, I know that it can be challenging to find time in your schedule to, to meet with these local user groups, but I just I really encourage you to, to make the time to do that. It's, uh, it, it's not only good for overcoming technical issues, but you can, you can make connections with people that will, that will carry you through your life. You know, I've been, I've been going to events with, with Justin for, what, 15 years, and uh, we meet each other at various places in the world and kind of pick up where we left off, and, and those sort of connections are so, so valuable um, because we're human, but they're also very valuable in building your career. So, yeah. Okay, uh, the local community part. I, I, I think I, I have a great experience when I helped to start the uh, after local community of Beijing and uh, um, just a very good memory for me and because uh, there's a bunch of uh, new projects come out and uh, yeah, we help each other and, uh, uh, and seek for the help from even from the uh, foundation and uh, we hold up, uh, we, we hold um, three conference com on this and uh, I'm really excited about uh, we can work together to make this happen and uh, especially um, we, we are human, we, we are social animal, we need to work together and uh, with the community help we can achieve the things we never thought we can do it by ourselves. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited about um, talking to people and uh, even to share my open source experience, do some com conference things. And uh, yeah, just as the quick shows in the slides and uh, in a conference a, um, 2019 in Tsinghua University, I even meet my colleague uh, in ByteDance. Uh, it's really a, 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 a amazing experience, and uh, yeah, and we, we if we uh, wants to know better about open source culture and uh, to uh, have that kind of experience, we need to talk to the local people. Just as uh, uh, Rich already said, have a meal with with him, and yeah, we we can talk some joke or we <laughs> we can. Yeah, we can make connections, and uh, then we, if we are working together, we, I, I think we can achieve a lot of things. And, uh, um, and especially, I, I, um, as an option member for, for more than 10 years, the early stage is kind of uh, lonely, because there's only a few people here, but I think uh, with the help of the community, we can see a lot of people join, and uh, there's a great improvement uh, of the AFG members in, in China, and I think we, we could bring more people into the uh, foundations and uh, yeah, build a uh, local community in a more successful way. Thank you so much, William. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, uh, I have like an extra little question. Like since you've mentioned about having meals together, I mean, the opening is pretty hard, so how do you like start the conversation? Any tips on this as our last question for today's roundtable discussion? Mm -hmm. How do you start a conversation? Well, you know, um, one of the definitions of community is people with a shared interest or a shared mission. And uh, what that gives us is an opening for, for conversation. And, and people like myself that find it awkward to talk to new people we talk about what Apache project we've worked on. It's a, it's a great place to start. Or we talk about what technology space we're interested in. And uh, you know, this is why people tend to talk about their job before they move to things that are more personal. And uh, so I, <laughs> I, I find it uh, 
be, because I've been a technologist my whole life, I find conversations at these events to be easier than, you know, than meeting people through, through work or whatever that, that, that don't have the same shared interests. And so being involved with Apache for over 25 years now, um, my oldest and closest friends are through this community, through those, those initial conversations. Thank you, and uh, I will also invite you guys to uh, like participate Rich uh, speech on 20th, uh, where he will share on communic uh, communication strategies with the management teams and elaborate more on open source. And I'm very thankful to having like half hour with you guys. Very good conversation, and I got pretty much inspiration. And I hope you guys also enjoy today's roundtable discussion where we discuss about uh, sustainability, security, and community development. And I hope your open source journey has already been gassed up with more inspiration as well. So let's wrap up and call it a day. Thank you so much for participation. And thank you for the audience and your patience. Thank you. Enjoy your lunch. Wow, 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 wow. We made it. <laughs> Just because of... <laughs> 哦，我需要说一下，我刚跟大华姐有很多沟通，我们就是怕耽误大家吃饭，所以加快了这个过程。但是如果大家想跟 Craig、想跟 Rich、想跟 Justin 聊天的时候，其实是可以跟我们 say hi 的。就是而且我们也会有一呃下午的时候也会安排一些 meet up， 然后欢迎有兴趣的人跟我们聊天。好，那今天的这个 keynote 我们就结束了。那我们非常感感感谢十位的重量级嘉宾。分享他们的开源洞见和心得，欢迎大家参加我们下午的分论坛的分享。明天和后天，我们将有更多的嘉宾，呃，来来分享，敬请期待。然后我们为大家准备了工作餐，呃，接下来大家凭那个签到时候领取的那个餐券，到一楼的咖啡厅或者二楼的中餐厅有序就餐。然后非常感谢今天大家的这个光临，呃，下午我们还有很多的精彩演讲，敬请关注。